Welcome back to The Real Men of Real Estate, uh, hosted by me, Thomas F. Chappelle Jr., with our very special guest, Dr. Sharon Barnes. So we're going to go fast forward a little bit and talk about your specialty right now, which is ADU. So um, take it away. <laughs> take it away. Well, um, I've been focusing on ADUs now for about three years, a little bit more than three years. Um, I was um, taking... Um, a training to take my business to the next level and one of my past clients friends I mean going back to even being a legal client where I help her set up several businesses and so forth in the Inland Empire she told me about a friend of hers who had gotten a job down in Los Angeles where they were leasing out the backyards of um, homeowners building ADUs and leasing them uh, and splitting the profits with the homeowner at no cost to the homeowner. And I got excited because I'm <laughs> like, wow, that's what we need. I mean, we're in the Inland Empire. We got some of the smallest houses, the biggest lots. We got credit problems. We don't have money. You know what I mean? We can get a, you know, build a, a ADU in the backyard and lease it out and, and give people extra cash. And people were talking about how much different $600 a month would make to the average family. And I'm oh, like, for sure. wow, you could get that just on your split, you know? Exactly. So I started down that path. I thought it was like really great. But then my investor friends was like, okay, how did that pencil out and how I get my money back? And they <laughs> own the property. And so, you know, it took a deep dive. And then while I'm diving, trying to figure out that model, um, the laws kept evolving. So um, basically these ADUs, some people call them granny fats, casitas, guest houses. I really don't like those terms. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't because I know why they use them is because it's familiar to us. Correct. That we all grew up and we knew back houses. And in L.A., they had a lot of, you know, back houses and so forth. And we knew the guest quarters in the more uh, upper, you know, class areas or whatever. And they had maids. They had maid quarters. But these ADUs are not your grandparents' back houses. They're not, you know, the elite um, guest houses. Okay. They are modernized small houses. I know we got the tiny home, but this is different because the ADUs – meet the standard building codes. So if you're look, living in a stucco house with lifetime tile roofing with all the um, internet connections inside, it's a small, a smart home, you know, um, stainless steel appliances or whatever, all we're talking about doing is taking your nice, big, luxurious home and making a smaller model. And they will look like family. They will feel like family. They will have recessed lighting, the newest appliances, all the technology. I mean, we can make them green efficient. Uh, back in the day, a back house, you couldn't even have a full bathroom or a full kitchen. That's why, if you remember, they would have like a little hot plate. Right. Okay. And maybe a toilet if they were lucky. <laughs> Other than that, you have to go to the main house. Right. ADUs are to be self-sufficient. They are to be self-sustaining that you can go down the side of the garage into your house and live long term without ever having to go to the main house for anything. And so it makes it um, cost effective because you can rent them out. You can rent them out to, um, you know, a lot of people are doing them now for visiting nurses. Some are doing for families. I've talked to actually... I've been working with a couple of the uh, companies, one, the ADU Resource Center in L.A. Um, in Glendale, they're expanding out this way, and also local um, contractors that are building ADUs. So I've talked to a lot of homeowners in our area, and I would say that most of the people that's building the ADUs that I've talked to are in the age range of 40 to 50. They are building for adult kids and parents. <laughs> Say okay. No kids. I have one of my <laughs> first projects in uh, Rancho. She says, I got two sons, one, well, three. One is on his own now. She wants to move back home, but she said, that's not happening. But the <laughs> other one, he needs to get out of my house. He can't go out into the world right now, but we're going to put him in the backyard, okay? And we're going to charge him rent, and we're going to save those that rent until he's qualified to go get a house. <laughs> and then his brother's going to go back there, okay? <laughs> when they're out and on their own or hopefully gone and bought property and did the same method of buying, building an ADU, getting some rental income, then we can just rent it out. But they want it as a stepping stone for children to get out the, out 
out the house. Right. And I do think that during COVID, I think a lot of people thought differently about their space. You know, because especially for that period when we were locked down and to have everybody confined and not been able to go and come. And I think that's one factor that when it did start opening up, you know, all the, the real estate market went crazy. People were talking about all this money. People weren't going out to happy hours. They weren't getting their nails done, weren't buying clothes. They was locked down. And then they looked at they had money in the bank if they were, you know, blessed enough not to lose a job and they right. able to go virtual. They had money in the bank. And all the kids that got on their nerves, I'm like, we need more space. <laughs> and we're going to get it by any means necessary. Okay? So they came out, and, and we got over asking price bids and so forth. And that's coming down a little bit. But I think that we did think differently. And then we had how it hit the um, senior care facility so hard. And you couldn't get in to even check on your loved ones. And if you were lucky, you could see them through a window. People much rather have their parents in their backyard you know, be able to schedule the nurses and whatever right. and to go and to take care of their family. So I think it's a great opportunity um, that's evolving. And one of the things behind the ADU law is that we do have a severe, uh, severe shortage in inventory. And the local state government realizes that we can't build ourselves out of it with the large investors. We need every hand on deck. And so they've re removed some of the barriers reduce some of the fees to allow the average homeowner to build an accessory dwelling unit on just about any lot in California that can meet the minimum setbacks, and there are a lot of them. Now, you said one thing that was interesting is that a homeowner can get one of these units in their backyard and it won't cost them a dime. Yeah, that's one program, and there, there are people out there that are investing that way. They will lease your backyard from you, okay, just lease it out, build an ADU, rent it out, and then share the profits with you, okay? Some of those contracts, they require maybe the first option. If you decide to sell, that they get the first option to purchase because you've been partners. Correct. So if you need to sell, downsize, or whatever, um, why not give it to me, especially if we've had a good relationship, okay? That might be the exit strategy. The uh, company uh, in Los Angeles that I was talking about, I actually got a chance to see some of their documentation, and they had a um, buyout agreement, a price that is filed on record. And so when you get ready to sell, you know, you could buy them out at a certain price, or you can um, negotiate and allow them to sell, the, you know, to buy the property if something happens to the main homeowner. Now, ADUs consist of all types of dwelling units now. That could be a uh, regular ADU transferring your garage into an ADU or putting an ADU on top of your garage or um, you got a junior ADU. So if you can dabble on that just a little bit for me. Okay, so let's take the junior ADU. The junior ADU um, is uh, in the law, it has to be 500 square feet or less, usually within the uh, existing footprint of the house. So it could be the single car garage, it could be the two car garage. Um, I've talked to couples, I had, um, they had like a four bedroom, five bedroom house. And when you walk in, you know, you have the nice big living room. Right. And then you walk through and you had the kitchen. And then the other side of the kitchen, they had the great room, right? In the family room before you go out the sliding glass door. Correct. Okay, to the back. They have decided to split the house by putting a wall up on the other side of the kitchen, putting another kitchen on that wall on the two sides, cutting a door in the wall to the side to lead to the master bedroom that already has the bedroom and the bathroom, and then getting the entrance door. So they are making a unit within that existing footprint, and if it's 500 square feet or less, it can qualify as a junior ADU. And the only caveat, though, right now, the law requires that an uh, owner of the house uh, has to occupy the junior or the main house. It's not free to investors right now. Okay. Okay. To, to do a junior ADU, but everything is evolving, and I think that probably will change next year. Okay, okay. So uh, with that in mind, uh, you and I definitely need to talk because I can do an investment thing, and, then, and <laughs> for sure, I'm not joking. I'm serious. I know. I just like now it's just it's, it's hard for me to even think about, uh, you know, I go out to see properties or working with buyers on that traditional side, and I'm looking at the house like, oh, wow. Like, you know, I have one coming up over in Paris, and it has this nice size 
flat yard in the back and it's like wow I could put a 700 or 800 uh, square foot ADU two bathrooms two bedrooms walk down the side of the house in this backyard I mean and we're in the Inland Empire it's less than 500,000 I mean so even with the average rent you got a positive cash flow about $500 yeah find me a partner out there you know <laughs> hey we can split the profit <laughs> you know we can do a whole lot of different things yes. you know because yes. I'm an, also an investor in a company called Backport Charles. We call it BPH uh, as an acronym, and uh, they do the tiny homes, and now they're moving into uh, um, single and double wise now right. because I know a lot of the mobile home parks are short on inventory. They either got empty space or they got these dilapidated units there, and uh, the parks can't uh, put no new inventory there because the COVID got them sitting behind from the manufacturers, so now they're looking at – a year and a half to two years before they can even put new uh, inventory there. So now BPH can be that that new supplier for them here in California. So a yeah. lot of people are interested in doing the ADUs, especially with the tiny homes. Because yeah. I tell people tiny homes has been around for years. Yeah. They used to just be trailers. Yeah. Now because of the, the trailers are looking like homes, that's where the tiny home comes into play. So a lot of people are very interested. They just don't know how to value these 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 units yeah. to where they can benefit from. So we're finding that very, um, it's an up and down kind of thing right now where everybody's stuck at. So um, don't know exactly where they're going to go with that. So yeah. uh, definitely I want to hook up with you and uh, see how I can collaborate with uh, with a, a homeowner and yeah. see how we can make a partnership right. by just adding the funds to it, build right. it, and just, you know, yeah, do that, it like that's that. There's definitely a way. I mean, it's it's like the syndication 2.0. We just need to do it, and we have opportunity here. And uh, back porch homes, like I had a client over in Rialto, and they have a small yard, but they want to put in the pool and and the and the ADU and put it on the solid foundation. So you know, back porch homes, um, their their product fit perfectly. One of the contractors that I met through the Inland Empire Investment Club came out and sat down with them. You know, we got the architect going so i mean it's just pulling all those resources together and pulling that team together to get it done okay so ladies and gentlemen we're going to take our final break we're going to come back more with dr barnes as well as the in um the real men of real estate thank you